Darkcast Network, the light shines brightest on our indie podcasts. I just want people to know there is nothing strange about his life, other than the fact that he was able to disappear for nine years. That is a quote from David, Robert Hoagland, a.k.a. Richard King's roommate. Robert Hoagland went missing from Newtown, Connecticut on July 29th, 2013, after failing to pick up his wife from the airport. He was found earlier this month in December of 2022 in Rock Hill, New York, only about 90 miles from his home in Newtown. He had been living there under the name Richard King for the past nine years. So what had he been doing over that time? And was the Facebook profile that we covered in the last episode actually his? Today, we are giving you another follow-up bonus minisode on the case of Robert Hoagland. I'm Kona Gallagher. And I'm Ethan Flick. And this is And Then They Were Gone. everyone welcome back i know this is the never-ending third season and i'm like trying to wrap it up but you know it's also the holidays and it makes it difficult so we wanted to come in and give you another little bonus mini-sode on the robert hoagland case because we have gotten more information the the info that we are really waiting you know to come out when we did the initial update when he was found his roommate, who he lived with and, and, you know, who is the one who called 911, has spoken to reporters and, you know, hasn't filled in every blank, but definitely filled in a lot of the blanks. All right. I'm I'm really curious to find out what he's been doing. Yeah. Yeah. It's so interesting. So, you know, we made we had our thoughts in the last episode. So, again, if you haven't listened to the episode called Found Robert Hoagland that we recently released Go back and listen to that. Um, but yeah, this uh, we got some things right, some things wrong. So let's get into it. And I, I still don't think that that Facebook ref- profile was him. Yeah, so, but <laughs> we'll, let, we'll talk about it. that. The story of Robert Hoagland slash Richard King really isn't filled with you know a ton of intrigue and subterfuge. It's just a story about a quiet guy living under the radar who was able to charm people into letting him continue to live under the radar, basically. So, like, working off the books, you mean, or or Yeah, exactly. And renting a home without ID or, you know, any paperwork. Mm. So it all started in the fall of 2013. I want to say right off the bat that the, the first big mystery in terms of Robert Hoagland's initial disappearance still hasn't been solved because we really don't know where he was between July and about November of 2013. I I still think he was probably just camping and, you know, doing things of that nature, but you know, around November, the weather's starting to get cold. So he was trying to find kind of a more permanent situation in the fall of 2013. David had separated from his wife. Okay. So he put a classified ad on Craigslist looking for a roommate, and a man named Richard King responded to the ad. Okay. You know, they met or whatever, and, you know, Richard King seemed like a nice guy. You know, at the time, he was 50 and friendly and, you know, seemed not shady or weird. (laughs) Normal? (laughs) Yeah, exactly, right? He and David were talking. He's like, okay, well, you know, you went the room and then started asking him you know, for ID and like all the normal things you would ask. Mm -hmm. And Richard slash Robert, of course, did not have any of that. So David's like, what's what's the deal? Now, according to Robert, 
which I'm just going to keep on calling him Robert because it's going to be too confusing to like yeah. go back and forth. Right. Now, according to Robert, he had also recently gotten divorced. Oh. And he had three adult kids. And he just wanted to make a fresh start. And he didn't have ID because he left it behind. Okay. So telling almost exactly the truth. Yeah. Except for the divorce part. Yeah. Except for the fact that he did not alert his wife to the fact that they were not going to be together anymore. (laughs) Right. So, yeah. So, you know, and that's the thing. That's the best kind of lie, right? A lie that has truth in it. Yeah. Because it makes it easier for you to remember. Exactly. So, yeah, it was almost all true. And so David, who, you know, it sounds like his whole situation was not great either. It's like, all right, I get it. Like, I'm fine with it. I'll rent you the room anyway. Mm. By this point, it turns out that he had already found a job, not in the restaurant industry, as I would have assumed. Okay. He told David that he was a real estate appraiser. And remember how in our episode, I said, there's no way he could be working that because that's licensed. You know, you have to go through the state. You have to, you're on a database. Like Mm -hmm. it's a very intense situation. Um, And there is no Richard King in New York who is a licensed real estate appraiser. So, you know, and Robert Hoagland, of course, was not a licensed real estate appraiser in New York. However, he apparently got hired on a contract basis, with air quotes, by a real estate appraising company. Now, the owner of this company has not responded to reporters' requests for comments. Uh, That's not surprising. I'm sure that this is probably going to result in some, some penalties. It's not clear if... Hoagland was actually working as an official real estate appraiser, or if he was just working as like an assistant or in, you know, like another unlicensed position within the firm, Mm. but like using his knowledge, having previously been a licensed appraiser, that part isn't clear. If it's a matter of him working in an unlicensed position and just, you know, kind of working under the table. Like, yeah, there are some issues there, but that's not the end of the world. What is much worse and much more concerning is that if he was acting as an actual real estate appraiser, because that could have a lot of financial and regulatory implications for this company. Mm. So we don't know about that. Uh, Hopefully... It's the former and not the latter. And, you know, as a realtor, I will say that I'm hoping it's more toward the former. I mean, I'm hoping that for a lot of reasons. But one, a lot of times when I get a real estate appraisal report, the last page is a copy of um, the license of the appraiser. Okay. So a lot, and I don't, again, we're in Virginia. I have no idea what they do in New York or whatever in terms of that. So uh, I'm, you know, I'm hoping that he wasn't actually serving as an appraiser, but you know, who knows, but he must have really charmed the owner of this company, which was Empire Inspections and Appraisals, which was based in Middletown, New York. So by the way, if you're listening to this and you did get an appraisal from Empire, like take a look at your appraisal report, just make sure (laughs) everything's on the up and up there. So not only did he convince this guy to hire him, you know, without any sort of identification or anything saying who he actually was, Richard King slash Robert Hoagland didn't have a car. And so the owner, like, you know, let him use a company car, basically. Hmm. And because this is like a very small area, David happened to know somebody who worked at Empire And, you know, said, oh, hey, like, I've got this guy who works there, Richard, he's asking to rent a room, you know, what do you think about him? And apparently, you know, like, he was a great employee, a good, you know, good coworker, whatever. And so the person totally vouched for him. He's like, oh, yeah, you know, he's reliable. He shows up to work every day. Like, I'm sure he'd be fine to rent the room, too. Mm. Now, David's home 
was a rental. He didn't own this home and it's the house he had been running with his wife. And so she moved out. He, you know, wanted the roommate to help make bills because again, he was like a teacher. He wasn't making a lot of money. That was a violation of the lease. So the landlord did not know that Robert lived there because Uh, David was not allowed to sublet. Gotcha. You know? Yeah. So yeah. So that went on for years with the landlord just not being aware of any of it. Mm. So there was no official paperwork. Like Robert was never on the lease, you know, nothing like that. Okay. But things went well. I mean, Robert apparently paid in cash. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> but it sounds like you know he was a nice guy they, they got along they would hang out they even started cooking family dinner like every sunday and having dinner together that's kind of weird yeah but i mean it was just like two divorced dudes living together and making food and robert of course was great in the kitchen oh right right yeah that makes sense and so david's like oh yeah this is great you know yeah And yeah, so they just kind of did that for years. As time went along, David, you know, got promoted at work and he was also a musician. So he would be playing gigs and stuff. And so he got to the point where he was able to buy a house. And so he did. But he and Robert got along so well that he like asked him to come live with them in his new house, too. Okay. And so he did. So they like moved to a different place together. And this was, I think, maybe about two years ago or so. And what's fascinating is, you know, we talked about the best lies involve truth. Like Robert really didn't talk about his past very much, but he would sometimes and he would tell real stories about how he loved vacationing with his family in Hilton Head, South Carolina, you know, how he helped fix up an old Volvo with one of his sons, how another one was had been struggling with addiction. You know, all of these things were basically covered in that episode of Disappeared and, you know, were true. But he just he really didn't get into it very much at all. Now, according to David, they had kind of like a brother relationship. In fact, like during this interview, David refers to him as like his brother, you know, throughout. Um, He doesn't say anything about any possible relationships that Robert might have been in in the past nine years. If he was dating or doing whatever, it wasn't anything serious because he lived with David for the entire time. Yeah. It's very different from the story of Richard Hoagland that we covered you know, when he left his family and started a new one. Right. He was able to get a fake identity and get married under that identity and have another child. But that was not what Robert was doing. He lived a very quiet life, very much kept to himself. Like, didn't have, I mean, he knew people, didn't have a ton of friends, didn't go out much. And, There were a lot of people, even though it's such a small town, that are still like, yeah, no, I have no idea who that guy is. (laughs) So he just spent nine years basically not doing anything? Yeah, that's what it sounds like. Like working a normal, boring-ass job. And wasn't it the same job that he had before? Yeah. Like, so it wasn't even like he was pursuing his dreams of becoming a chef. Right. Like... He, He just didn't want his family anymore? I I don't know. I mean, and again, you know, thinking about this from the family's perspective, like, you know, with Richard Hoagland, at least, like he was buying planes and, you know, <laughs> like yeah. having adventures and stuff. But yeah, Robert Hoagland was renting a room and working at a real estate appraisal office. That's crazy. Yeah. So even though he was living under the radar and and not having grand adventures, like he wasn't a hermit, like he volunteered at a local soup kitchen and, you know, he did things. He got out and people did know him. We actually just had somebody comment on our Facebook page about, you know, how she saw him every day for like two years. Right. Yeah, you saw that. Yes, which means I was right because she the comment was in reference to the Facebook profile. It was. So I was right. It, well, that was not him. It was not him. Yeah. So let's take a little detour because there was a photo that was published in the article 
from 2021, just last year, of Robert Hoagland. So I'm going to show it to you really quickly. And we'll have this uh, photo up on our social media and our blog and everywhere else. So you can see for yourself definitively that this is not the Richard King Facebook profile that was going around. So here's a picture of Robert Hoagland from about a year ago. Uh Uh-huh. He looks exactly the same as he did before. Literally. Lost the glasses. But, exactly the same. Or maybe he just wasn't wearing them at that moment. Right. Like who knows? But he, he, but he looks exactly because he the didn't same. always wear the glasses in the um in the uh the stills from the gas station the day, you know, the last surveillance footage of him, he didn't have his glasses on. So I was right. I am still the face man. You are still the face man. Um yeah, he looks exactly the same, except, you know, nine years older. Yeah. Like he has not gained or lost any weight. His head is still shaved. Like there's nothing different about him. To the point where anybody who had seen the disappeared episode or knew about his case at all and saw him in Rock Hill, New York, there's no way you wouldn't realize that's the same person. Right. So I guess there's not a whole lot of true crime buffs in that area. I know, right? Like I said earlier, if you know, you're know you listening in Rock Hill, New York, check your appraisal reports. But I mean, apparently nobody is because it's like, <laughs> like, if you guys did not know who this dude was, I can't imagine you're listening to our little show. I guess not. So this whole thing started to unravel in really like this past year. And that was really the first and only indication that David had that something might have been a little weird here from what he says. I mean, you know, we obviously don't know, but Robert told him, told David that he might start to receive mail in a different name. Okay. So not in Richard King's name. Did he have an explanation as to why? uh, No, he did not. And David apparently didn't ask, but now looking back, Apparently, in the last six months or so, Robert's health had been declining. Now, remember, when he went missing nine and a half years ago, he was on blood pressure medication. Right. He didn't take it with him. Right. And since he didn't assume a real new identity, new identity, he probably couldn't get his medication. Yeah. So, and, and David doesn't know. David doesn't know if he had had any way to get medical care in the past nine years. So he could have very well have been off of his medication for this entire time. But David did notice that Robert's health was declining. He said that he was slowing down. Because of that, he had also changed his diet, you know, fewer steaks and stuff like that, like more fish, just kind of trying to be a little bit more heart healthy. The weekend that Robert Hoagland died, the first weekend in December, on that Friday, which was December 2nd, David's security camera caught Robert coming home that night. So David had a gig out in the city. So he was actually gone that evening. So, and you know, he didn't look at the security footage at the time. He had no reason to. Right. But when he went back and looked at it, he did see Robert coming home that night and holding his back like he was in pain Mm. and said he was just kind of walking really slowly. Now, David came back, you know, late that night or whatever and just kind of crashed. When he got up and left the next morning, he saw Robert's car was still there, which surprised him because apparently he usually worked on Saturdays. But, you know, he's like, well, maybe he's just not working today. Like, it wasn't alarming or anything like that. Just a little bit out of the ordinary. Mm -hmm. But then he also didn't hear from or see Robert on Sunday at all. And remember, they had Sunday dinner together every single week. Mm -hmm. But again, you know, they're not like married. Robert's a grown man. Like, he can do what he wants. And so he was just like getting more and more uncomfortable. But just went on with his life. But then on Monday, David's at work and apparently Robert is not, and he's still not answering his phone. So it was Monday that he finally went back home and went into Robert's room and found him lying down with his arms crossed and his sleep mask on. 
though they did call 911 and then the 911 call, you know, ask for an ambulance, David said that it was clear he was gone by that time. The other question was, why did the police officers start, you know, looking for paperwork and stuff about him? Like, why did they think that he wasn't Richard King? Like, how did that whole thing started? Because, again, he was eventually preliminarily identified by the mail that they found in Robert Hoagland's name. Now, the answer to that is that it was an unattended death. So because it was an unattended death, they had to find identification for him. He didn't have identification. Right. So that's why they started searching around to see what they could find. And what they found was, again, the mail in Robert Hoagland's name. So that's what they took back, you know, to the station. They put it in the computer and then found that he was a missing person. And again, considering that he looks exactly like his pictures from 2013. Yes. It wasn't hard to put two and two together. Right. It does seem as though Robert did die of a heart attack. That's the preliminary cause of death that they've released. It was cardiac arrest. I'm not surprised by that. I mean, obviously, if he'd gone nine years without his blood pressure medication, like, can't beat biology. Yeah, exactly. And he was only 59 years old. David, once he found out about Richard's true identity, says that he was just as shocked and confused as everyone else and says that he doesn't know why Robert did what he did, but says that he's sure that he had a great reason. Robert Hoagland's family hasn't really spoken on this. They probably won't, honestly. Chris did say early on that the family was, you know, coming together and meeting back up in Newtown and they were probably going to go to Rock Hill and, you know, just try to do like figure out what they could figure out. Right. Yeah. And that they were all very confused. I can't imagine again that just. Well, I mean, hopefully they get a chance to talk to David. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. To David, to other people who knew him yeah. and just to if that's what they want, you know, if, that, if they want. Right. If that's what yeah, they want. Yes. Yeah. Robert Hoagland's death was not suspicious in any way, so it's not going to be investigated in that manner right. by Rock Hill police. Yeah. And Newtown police have said that there was not a criminal element to his disappearance, so they're kind of out of it at this point as well. I mean, the case is closed. Yeah. I mean, there there is no... He didn't do anything illegal. Yeah. Uh, shitty. Yeah. Yes. But he didn't break any laws, so... Not really anything to investigate. So against all odds, Robert Hoagland really is the guy who left everything behind, including his wallet, his medication, his favorite shoes, and just started a new life. And unfortunately, that life came to a tragic end. But at least his family now knows where he was. And the gift of this is not only having that measure of closure, but now the cloud of suspicion that his son Max has been living under for the past 10 years can finally be lifted because he didn't hurt his father. His associates didn't hurt his father. He didn't have anything directly to do with Robert Hoagland's disappearance. Right. He was just a troubled kid who has gotten better and you know like we said in the last episode seems to be doing well that's you know the only kind of positive spin we can really put on this but that's it i mean that's pretty much all of the answers that we're going to get in this case he was just a man who couldn't handle his life anymore and just wanted to start over So thank you again for joining us for this little mini-sode. Um, we will be releasing our next and final for the season full episode as soon as we can. I do promise you that we're, we're working hard on that. Now, we are going to take a break after that. 
and kind of hopefully get a little bit more ahead for the next season. But we've got a lot of big things planned for next season and we're not going to leave you hanging either. We will be putting out content. It just won't be, you know, the typical new full length episodes. So stay tuned for all of that. And um, yeah, we'll see you back here as soon as we can for the next episode. See you then. You can see all the sources for this episode along with photos and videos at our website and then they were gone.com. And be sure to follow us on social and then they were gone pod on Facebook and at ATTWG pod on Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter. If you like what we're doing, please subscribe and consider leaving a five star review on Apple Podcasts. It will help new listeners find us. And the more people that listen, the more chances we have of bringing someone home. And then they were gone as hosted by Kona Gallagher and Ethan Flick. All research writing and editing is done by Kona Gallagher. Theme music is The Stork by Ketza. Additional music is provided by Kai Engel. And then they were gone is a little monster production. <laughs> <laughs>